Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus done everyone. I want to say good morning to our people who are worshiping with us from home. This is Trinity Lutheran Church in Herkimer, New York, and I'm the Reverend Gail Wolling. It is so good to see you all this morning. Today we enter ordinary time. The church year is divided between sacred time and ordinary time. And you know when we're in ordinary time because the color is green. Now, we don't mean ordinary like I gotta change the oil and go to the grocery store ordinary. What it means is it's an ordered time. It comes from a different understanding of the word ordinary. But I want to use this idea of us sliding out of sacred time and moving into ordinary time with this question, are we also sliding out of active faith and into ho-hum, dull faith? I say this because as I prepared for today's sermon, nobody wanted to talk about it. I have probably eight authors that I go to regularly, and they had the shortest possible comments on the lessons for today. It seems that even the experts find today's lessons a wee bit dull. What are we going to do about that? I want you to listen for examples of resurrection in the story. And that's going to mean you're going to have to expand your ideas past a stone rolled away from the tomb. Look for examples of resurrection in today's stories. And with that, let us begin our worship with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. If you will, please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God. We confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. 
claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn. God, you are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. If you'll please be seated. Thank you. 
Our first reading this morning from the Old Testament is from the prophet Hosea, excuse me, chapter five. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it, it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to, the, to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the shadows, showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hooped them from the, by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 50. I will read the light print and with the congregation, please read the dark print along with the antiphon together. Call, Call upon me, me in the in day, the of, day trouble, of trouble, says, says your, God. your God. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your burnt offerings are always before me. I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens. For all the wild animals of the forest are mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. Call, Call upon, upon me, me in the day, the day of, trouble, of trouble, says your God. I know every bird of the mountains and the creatures of the fields are mine. For the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall honor me. Call upon me in the day of trouble says your God. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Romans chapter four. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, 
quote, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, he gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not ex exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So no numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our transpass, transpass, yeah, transpasses or sins and was raised for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, only those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now, while Jesus was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. 
and they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand and the girl got up and the report of this spread throughout that district. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you'll please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the commentators find this particular pericope, this assigned set of lessons, to be terribly dull. They really don't know what to say about it. You know, oh yeah, it's another one of those stories about tax collectors and healings. You know, a leper who gets cleansed or a child who has demons cast out or, you know, maybe a woman who stops bleeding, a blind man. You know, one of those stories that we get. And to a small degree, we've lost a little bit of interest in these so-called miraculous healings. And when we lose interest, we lose hope. Now, I wanna risk saying this. There comes a point, I think, in our faith life when we wonder whether following Jesus is going to lead us anywhere. We wonder if this full and abundant life that Jesus speaks about will ever be a reality that we will know. There's this top 40 hit right now, and I can see that this is a crowd that listens to the top 40 all the time by a singer by the name of Louis Capaldi. I always forget his name. Lucky my daughter remembers. And the song, it's called uh, Someone to Love. And the refrain is, now the day bleeds into nightfall, and there's no one here to get me through it all. I was getting kind of used to being someone you loved. Now the day pleads into, it's the finest bit of poetry I've heard in a long time. Well, my wonder is if we are at risk, and believe me folks, when I preach a sermon like this, I'm preaching to me, all right? These are issues I wrestle with. Is my faith beginning to bleed into complacency, apathy? Are we in danger of forgetting who we are and that we are someone God Loves. I got kind of used to being someone you loved. Have we begun to allow the ordinary, the, you know, the stuff that fills up your calendar and uses up your hours, that ordinary stuff of living? Are we in danger of allowing the ordinary? to crowd out the divine? Are we at risk of losing the wonder of God's great outpouring of mercy that comes to us in Jesus? Don't we occasionally discount God's audacious healing of our world, a world which we pollute and which pollutes us. So I'm gonna offer a possibility. 
the possibility that these stories that have become so familiar, these healings, and we could rattle them off because you guys know your Bible. If in fact these healings are given to us so we can begin to experience a renewal of hope that we might begin to recognize resurrection in whole new places. Expanding our understanding of God's gift of resurrection beyond a stone rolled away from a tomb one Sunday a year, but rather to see that in today's lessons and in most of the lessons we get, resurrection happens. We see it when Matthew stands up from that tax collector toll booth and decides to follow and become a disciple. We see it as the woman straightens up, bent over to touch the fringe of Jesus' cloak, but bent over by gender expectations. Oh, I don't know, greed, envy, prejudice, all the stuff that cripples us. And she rises up and Jesus calls her daughter. And in that moment, this woman rises up from an anonymous nobody who nobody wants to a member of God's family. And then we get the story of the desperate father, the father who's desperate to regain a lost child. And I expect there are those of you who have had this experience. He goes to Jesus and he doesn't say to Jesus, my daughter's sick, maybe you can make her well. He already knew she was dead and he goes to Jesus and says, come to my house because you can give her life again. And the resurrection is not just in that little girl. The resurrection is in the father who trusted that Jesus was the one who could make this happen. Now, I want you to remember that when Jesus calls you, calls me, calls us into discipleship, he is calling us to follow, but he's also calling us away from something before. That to follow Jesus means we leave something behind. We leave habits behind sometimes we leave places, we leave people behind. The tax collector had to leave behind tax collecting and the kind of money he made doing that so he could care for his neighbors. We aren't just taking a different vocational path, like, um, I don't know, should I be an accountant or should I be? Yeah, not that. It's not like we're deciding, do you want a hamburger? You want a hot dog? The, the question of the summer season, right? Hamburger or hot dog? It's more than that. We're not just taking on a new job. We're taking on a new identity, even when we haven't got a clue what that's going to look like. But here's the thing. In the process of following, we will be transformed. Transformed. We don't get to just, you know, go to Jesus for a little polishing up. 
okay, okay, I'll stop swearing eight times a day. I'll just do it three times a day, right? That's not what this is about. This isn't polishing up our image or our resume. This is a transformation. And I would hope it's a transformation from just living ordinary things in ordinary days to having an awareness and a desire to see and serve God in our lives. You know, I get concerned some days that my office chair is going to become too comfortable. And I'll become too satisfied with the work that I'm doing. And I'll allow myself to become blind and deaf to the broken lives that surround me. And unlike Matthew, I won't risk leaving my happy place, the place that has fed me, the place that has paid my bills, the place that has given me a pulpit to speak from. I won't leave it in order to take up the call of Jesus in my life. But I know that should I sit still and refuse to venture out, I'm going to miss Jesus and all those resurrection moments out there. I'm going to miss all of those people who were down, who Jesus lifted up, all of those people who were dying, who have found new life, all of those people who were mourning, who have found joy in the morning. And of course, the greatest risk is I will miss my own resurrection. We've each been called to a life of hope and service to others. And I, for one, think it's worth the risk to get up and to follow. So let us go where Jesus leads. Amen.
Join with me in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you'll please be seated for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer from our hearts our prayer for a world that is so in need. We pray, O oh God, for the whole church. Unite us with any on the margins that the whole world recognizes that your awesome mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for creation, ten forests and fields, and safeguard all cattle and birds and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, oceans, and send rains to order, water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. Lord, we think of the great fire in, uh, in Canada. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for a people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected, and inspire, Lord, in our leaders, policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God Almighty, for all who are in need, accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, anyone who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. We think of Risley and Pat. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, and we especially name before you, Ann, Bob, Tiffany, Larry, Rosemary, Judy, Rachel, Barbara, Bill, and Billy, Teresa, Jennifer, Bo, and Peter, Charlene, Jeff, Gary, Nancy, Charlie, Edith, Joe and Harry, Gail, 
Tim, Kim, and Chase. Irene, Daniel, Tanya, Michelle, and Joyce. And those we name in our hearts at this time or at loud before you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, almighty God, for the eradication of racial hatred. On this week, when we commemorate the Emmanuel Nine, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Here we may say intercessions out loud or to ourselves at this time. Your prayer. We praise you, Lord, for so many things for the beautiful message from Pastor Gail, the, for the information in Faith Alive, and to see the beautiful children. Help us to grow in your care. Help us to humble ourselves before you and to be overjoyed because you call us your children. How awesome is that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, in your mercy. We also pray for the meeting, the congregational meeting we are having this morning. May your will be done. as we meet together. For your church. Lord God in your mercy. Our prayer. Dear God, thank you for rescuing us. Thank you for God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, almighty God, for Barnabas and for all the saints, and especially for Joanne Kellenbeck. What a beautiful woman. And now she's home with you. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us up with all our beloved dead to new life because God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you all. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another.
I want to thank all those who have continued to provide support for the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church. Those who worship with us from at home and far away, who continue to send financial support for the work we do together. Thank you very much. Let us stand and offer a prayer for the offering of our gifts and God's gifts to us. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we celebrate your victory over the power of death and your invitation to all creation to new life in you, we give you thanks, almighty God, not as we ought, but as we are able, and we offer our praise and thanksgiving for the bounty of your grace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. All honor and glory be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into addiction, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. We gather from near and far to become one through the table of our Lord. It is the risen Christ who invites you to the table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. If you'll please be seated. And now those of us who are worshiping from at home, if you're prepared to take communion, first take the bread and hear these words. This is my body given for you. Now take the cup and hear these words. This is my blood shed for you. And now, if you'll come forward to receive communion.
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ broken 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 for you. Take it out. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. Stephen, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Grizzly, the body of Christ given for you. Paul, the body of Christ broken for you. 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 Rich the body of Christ broken for you. Judy the body of Christ broken for you. Richie, the body of Christ, broken for you. Joanne, the body of Christ, broken for you. broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I'll take them. That's all right. The blood of Christ. Okay. Thank you.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment you have we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now if you'll join me in our final hymn, O Christ, Your Heart Compassionate. Oh Christ, your heart compassionate for every human being. It's beating also, 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 Please be seated. There is a semi annual congregational meeting following our worship downstairs. There is coffee and goodies. Council meeting is coming up June 14th via Zoom. The book group is meeting on June 16th at 10 a.m. You're to talk about a book that makes you laugh. For those of you who aren't readers and think that that's impossible, I might say that's not true at all. They make me laugh out loud all the time. Faith Alive is next to be held June 25th. Women in Faith Summer Bible Study kicks off on Zoom on Monday, June 26th. And Bible Study is Thursday at 10 a.m. I also wanted to announce that the funeral for Risley's mom will be this coming Wednesday at 11, at 11 o'clock, right here in the church for those who would like to attend. Are there other announcements? And with that, if you'll stand and receive a blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace, 
share the harvest. Thanks be to God.